Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Right here I got a little three pound, or about a 2.87, I think it said, a little under three pound bottom round roast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in a slow cooker with a lot of neat veggies and a lot of goodies. I'm going to simmer it for about an hour and a half, and we're going to make the best roast beef po' boy sandwiches you ever had. First of all, I love this slow cooker, but I got to tell you a little something about it. On the front, there's a setting. It's off, low, high, and warm. I didn't know that. I thought the last time I used it, it was off, low, medium, high. So I cranked it all the way to high, which was just warm, filled it full of all kinds of meat and vegetables, came back two hours later and you could stick your finger in it, it was room temperature. So check your slow cooker, make sure that all the way to the right is not high, it's just warm. So it's off, low, high, warm. But we're going to put this baby on high to get it cranking up and get this meat down in here. Then I picked up some beef broth and I noticed that one was reduced sodium and the other one was regular so I thought well I'll get one of each. So I'm just going to dump these babies in. They're only $1.29 a piece. I'm going to cover up this roast. And by the way I hit that roast with some salt, pepper, onion powder and garlic powder pretty heavy to start with because I knew it was going to get in all this juice. Got those two in there. Then I got some other little goodies here. I got some, let me see here, these little guys, what do they call these, Sheila? Carrots, that's what it is. Got some carrots, and these are what? Celery and some onions. Got some celery, some carrots, and some onions. They said the memory is the first to go, and I can't remember what they said the second thing was. All right, that brings it up over the top of the roast. I thought I was going to have to add a little bit of water, which I might do anyway to make sure it's got plenty. And I also want to add a green pepper but bring the camera over here and I'm going to show you how I cut up a green pepper. I already did one here. I'm just going to cut the top off and cut the bottom off. And these are easy to work with because here you can just cut however you want it for your, you know, you can cut it up in little chips if you want to use it for a salad or something, but I'm cutting it in bigger chunks for this little broth over here. Then take the top cap and just cut around that little stem. It's really simple. I know it's kind of foolish to show somebody how you cut up a pepper, but I like to share that with you. And then the inside now is really easy because all you have to do is just make one, two, three little cuts and it drops right out of there. Look at here. Just sweet. And I also wanted to show you this for one other reason. I'm going to take these rings here and this is going in another recipe coming up real soon that we're going to film so I'm going to go ahead and do it now see if I can do this I'm going to put these on the grill like this and I'm going to crack some eggs in there and cook them for a little breakfast thing inside these pepper rings but that's another show right now let's get this stuff back in here all right, we got all our goodies in here. I might even add a little more seasoning to this broth. Remember, this is off, low, high, warm. So we're going to put her back on high. And I love this slow cooker because it has a sealed top that clamps down, almost like a pressure cooker, that's got a little vent hole. And this, the, the reason I'm using this instead of a cooker or baking it in the oven is because this has a great low setting. Once you get it on high for about a half hour, and I'll show you that in about a half hour, we'll turn the camera back on, you turn it down to low and it's just got the perfect little simmer. You can leave stuff in there for six, eight hours at a time and it's just perfect. We're gonna do this for about an hour and a half, about th you know, 30 minutes on high to get it really going, then about another hour on simmer, then we're gonna slice it, then we're gonna do something else before we put it in our sandwiches. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes and give you an update. Here's kind of a little update 
I don't advise that you do this, but some of these slow cookers, like this one, does not have a light on the front. So when you plug it in, you don't know if it's on. So if you'll check it immediately, you can feel this inside metal, boy, and it gets hot like bingo. So you can just feel that heat really pouring, and then you'll know that the unit is working. You can set your little porcelain pot back in there. I don't advise that everybody do that, but that's what I do to make sure the unit's working. So, see you in a half hour. Well, Sheila, should I tell them? <laughs> we went to the store and got involved with some friends and forgot about stuff, and this has been in here for about two to two and a half hours on high. And I got to check this roast beef out, so come on over here, let's take a look at it. Well, I kind of cheated because I already peeked. In fact, that's some nice butter floating on top there. Because I only seasoned the meat and not all that broth and the vegetables, when I tasted it, it was pretty bland. So I had to put in between a teaspoon and a tablespoon of, of salt in here, plenty of pepper. I even gave it a little shot of Cajun seasoning and then about a quarter of a stick of butter and now it's really, really dandy. So let me move this over to the side here and I'm going to pull this little meat out of here, see if I can get this out of the way. Am I still in frame with my board here, Sheila? That's good. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can get this on here, move some of these veggies out of the way for right now. Remember, I did leave that little fat cap on there. So I'm going to turn that down. And then I'm going to empower my little fillet knife that I use for filleting fish and cut this up. Now that I got this turned over, I'm just going to trim that little fat cap off of there. Put that on that saucer over there. Turn it back over. And you'll notice that the grains are running this way in this meat, so I want to cut this against the grain. All right, let me get this all sliced up nice and thin. I'll be right back with you. She likes it medium to medium well. I'm almost done here. Okay, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. I seen this in a recipe once, so I want to try it. And I'm dipping just the juice out of this roast pot. I'm going to transfer it into this pan here, because this is almost done, and because this is almost completely done, it gives me the chance to do one more thing with it here. Now that I got some of that juice in this pan over here, I'm going to transfer my beef into there. Oh, this is going to be so good, Sheila. And, you're gonna, and you can already see, she would already eat this the way it is, by the way. But I want to make it even more tender. So I'm going to move it over into this cooker. Now, we're going to add another ingredient. Alright, we've moved all our beef to this little electric fry pan. And I'm going to pour in some beef gravy on top of here. Just one little jar. And this is just, this is from Kroger's, and all it is is just home style beef gravy. You can buy it over there in the gravy section. And I'm going to incorporate that just to make it a little thicker juice. And then there's one other thing I'm going to do. And let's stop camera and set up for that right now. Look what I got in my little blender here. Them vegetables, the carrots and the celery and the onions and some juice and then ooh, look at it, it's already bubbling in there I'm gonna pour that blended veggies in there let me stir that up just a hair and I'm gonna let this sit in here and simmer for about another 20 or 30 minutes to make that beef extremely soft and absorb all those flavors 
See you in about 25 minutes. Sheila, I think this is done. I'll tell you what, it's been about 20 minutes. Can't wait. Just can't wait. You know, I like to have fun when I cook. Just experiment around with stuff. I've never blended vegetables. I came up that, with that last night in my sleep. I thought, why not just throw them veggies right in a blender to release all the flavors. And uh, it's time to take this roast beef. First, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of this broth right here. This is going to be our dipping sauce for our sandwich. And I'm also, boy, I need to turn that burner off, don't I? And I'm also going to pour some in this little pan right here, and I'll show you why. Awesome. Now, I really want to take the time to switch this bread here and move this over there. So give me just a second. It's time to build this monster. We got some Italian bread here, and I slice just the top half in half. I'm going to move that over here. Let's start out with a little bed of lettuce on here. And it's okay if some falls off to the side because that's what makes it good. Get it on there as good as we can. Then we're going to put some tomatoes, and I'll tell you, I love these little round tomatoes that come in a box, kind of, that are about as big as a 50 cent piece and they're still on the vine. Gee, they're so flavorful. I love them better than any other tomato that I have found at the store. So I'm going to load it up with those little guys. Then, that one I forgot to take the stem off, so I'm just going to turn him over so you can't see that. And I found some neat pickles, dill pickles for like hamburger dill pickles, but they were oval sliced. And I thought, how neat is that to lay on there? And now, my friends, it's time for the star of the show. This is Sheila's well done, or medium well, I should say, roast beef. And it's been simmering. It's wonder it don't just fall apart. It is actually falling into little pieces here. It's so tender. What do you think, Sheila's looking good? Yes. And she doesn't like rare roast beef. Now I know a lot of you do out there. That's a whole different recipe. But for this one, we just want these little soft pieces. Oh no, you're not running away. You're gonna get right up there and behave yourself. I'm gonna turn him sideways so I can fit one more piece on the end. Let me find the ideal little piece here. There he is. Perfecto. Now why I poured a little juice in here. There's some dip and double dip sandwiches out there where they dip just the top half of the sandwich. It's called a dip. Then they'll dip the bottom bread and the top bread. And I didn't want it to get away on me so I'm only going to do a single dip. But we're going to take the top half. We're going to soak it just for about 10 seconds in there. Man, look at all that goodness. Same thing with this one. This is called a single dip. And now I'm going to cut it the rest of the way through the sandwich. And voila, let me move this over just a hair. Looky here. What do you think, Sheila? That's a big sandwich. <laughs> well, you only get half of it. Now I get the other half. And this is our little dipping sauce. It's not an odd juice or anything like that. It's the broth, and I'm going to take the rest of this broth and this meat, chop it up, put it back in here, and make a little soup out of it. But look at that. Does that look yummy or what? Anyway, that's our roast beef po' boy sandwich. Well, you know me. I love to mash stuff, and I've been kind of pressing down on the sandwich. It just feels right with the world, and I'm going to cut it. each one into thirds now that I've smashed it down there. Hope this has been a kind of a neat little fun recipe. We don't get too serious about stuff around here. Get a top round or a bottom round roast, season it up, 
pour some of that beef broth in there and some veggies, cook it for a couple hours on high or low or whatever it turns out for you, slice it real thin. I could have took time and sliced it even thinner against the grain. Get yourself some Italian bread, a little bit of lettuce, some pickles, some tomatoes and put that gravy in there and let it simmer for a while. I'm not going to waste either one of these two pots right here. They're both going together and become another little soup that I'm going to have in the kitchen. I hope you've enjoyed our roast beef po' boy sandwiches because we made them just for you. Uh, little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up over here at the end of the video and you can put your mouse on it, click on it, and hope you subscribe to our channel. Over here we'll have another recipe, something else that you might really enjoy. And that's all we got to say. Is this the best? roast beef po' boy sandwich you've ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall along with Pretty Miss Sheila running the camera. Bye bye for now.